What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Art Shack. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm actually going to be showing you how to uh, essentially start a sketch. Um, and I'm going to be showing you with a picture that I would even I would consider to be a somewhat complicated composition. And um, honestly, if if someone were to put this picture in front of me and say, here, draw this, um, I, I would be kind of daunted by just the amount of detail that's actually in here. So I have, over the years, developed a sort of um, ability to actually simplify uh, something like this down into several simple elements that you can then translate over to paper, and then once you have um, an adequate sketch, and then you can then you know go into the details and be able to do everything, and then it helps to just really simplify things down and makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to be doing that by showing you um, visually how I simplify this down. So I'm going to be doing this with um, a marker, and I'm going to outline certain things within this just to kind of show you how uh, I would simplify it. So with this marker, it's a um, it's a Copic sketch marker. Um, and I'm going to be end up drawing it on a sketch paper in the end. Um, so, with this, uh, I, I always try to bring out uh, several key elements within the image. And I'm going to zoom in on the image here. We'll go back out a little bit. All right, right about there is pretty good. Okay. All right, so, without getting a whole bunch of marker on my fingers. <laughs> All right, so let's... Uh, go into this image here. And the first thing I want to point out is this major embankment going on over here. Hopefully you can kind of see these marks that I'm making on my page. And I'm going to follow this line all the way around, just like that. So essentially what I've just made is like a half circle, you know, going around this bend here. And then the next line is going to start right over here where the snow is and kind of go around all this detail here. Keep following until you kind of reach this rock and over like that. And that is another line. And notice that there's a, um, a vanishing point, sort of, you know, in this general area right here. Um, both of these lines converge to that point, and that's where you can no longer see around the bend. And uh, that helps to uh, build the illusion of depth so that we can really kind of get uh, the perspective that you can actually walk within this image. Um, and then the next thing, well, there's there's a tree line up here, but I'm, I'm not going to be too worried about this for my sketch. But I'm going to try to pick this out. It follows, and then it goes somewhere in here where I can't really tell where it goes. But it's there. So that tree line's about there. Okay, and then just got some. The last thing is just these trees, really. Yeah, you know, and then when you do this, I mean, you only have a couple key elements to this composition, which uh, overall is not that difficult once you extract those major lines. Okay, so the, the you know, honestly, the major lines that are in this is just this line and this line. That's pretty much it um, as far as I would tell you um, that's all I would need to be able to make this composition is just those two lines and then from there just being able to fill in basic details or just the basic objects to help depict what these things actually are so oh, wrong way I'm gonna zoom back out okay so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move this picture off to the side I'm going to have this one down here. I'm going to try to keep both images so that you can see them. Okay, and... I'm going to make... I'm going to make this line over here. I'm going to make a, a square or a rectangle that's roughly the same size as what I have going on over here. Of course, I completely smudged this area, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's just I'm just doing a sketch, so it should be all good. I can always grab a better eraser if I had it ready. That's one thing I should try doing before I <laughs> do one of these tutorials, is actually have the tools that I might need ready to go when I need them. That might be a good idea, right? Uh, maybe I'm just <laughs> overthinking things. I don't know. Being prepared. Eh. Who needs it? <laughs> just wing it, right? Alright. 
Okay, so I want to make a uh, rectangle sort of shape. And I'm currently using a 4B pencil and some sketch paper. And the only reason why I'm using a 4B pencil is because I know how sometimes using a lighter pencil does not translate very well to camera. But normally if I was sketching I'd probably be using an HB, uh, a B, or a 2H pencil, something around there, uh, just to, or even an H pencil, just to um, keep things light and easy to erase. Because once you start going really dark like this, it's sometimes hard to erase. Okay, so with this um, area, this I'm going to be drawing in this area, um, the first thing I like to do is just to extract the lines that I just created within this uh, image. So uh, I have this line here and then this one here. These are the two lines. If I get these two lines relatively the way that I want them to look, I'll be able to replicate this image uh, much easier. So what I like to do is keep in mind, you know, that we have the top of the image here, bottom of the image here. This line is just above center. So center of this um, image here, it's right about here. So I mean, you're just above center. It's roughly here. I'm just, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring. Um, so it's slightly above center. So I mean, center on here is about there. So I mean, that line is going to start about here. And then if you do center on the image down here, it's roughly there. So I mean, it's it's almost halfway between this center. So it's between um, these two points. You know, this is a quarter, this is half, this would be three quarters, this would be the full, and it's roughly between a quarter and a half. So, I mean, I'm just doing rough dimensions here. This does not have to be perfect at all, so don't worry about that. So, roughly, if this was half, and if this was quarter, that line would, oh, this is starting here, that line would somewhat come out and arc something, something like this. doesn't have to be perfect you can always fix it later on I, I kinda like to do a couple lines and then just take the eraser and erase out the lines that they don't particularly like again use a lighter pencil it'll be much easier for you to erase just something like that okay and the same thing with this line now no, notice this line it's a little bit below center so I mean this line can start somewhere around here and it's gonna make its way towards the middle here and here's about a quarter of the way down so it's gonna you know land closer to the quarter so if you have a half about here this is about a quarter so this line is gonna make it all the way to about here and just like that I mean you have these two basic lines it's not uh, perfect but it is pretty close so uh, I, I would call this like the basic composition. Uh, it, of course, it's going to need a lot more uh, elements and details, which I'll uh, attempt to add in just to kind of give you guys an idea of how I would uh, do that. So, and the main thing to help with um, adding in those details is eventually these lines are going to be gone. Because um, having in a lot of these guidelines and outlines in a final image uh, kind of takes away from the uh, realistic look of it. So the more realistic you want an image to look, the less uh, line or outline work you want to be able to see. Alright, so, um, and then within this image you can kind of, uh, with just this line, you can sort to start to gauge and where things are. So um, just keep in mind, you don't have to do everything perfectly. That's the thing about landscapes that is really awesome. So you don't always need to have everything perfectly in place and alignment for it to actually be perceived as a landscape. You know, that's kind of the reason why I really like to do landscapes is just you have so much freedom. All right, so um, with what I have, uh, where do I want to start? Yeah, I'll start about here. Now notice there's one, two, three major trees. There's a small tree something going right there, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, I just want to replicate the three major trees, but I also want to follow this line. See, there's a line kind of going right here. There's, there's the, uh, a path. This was on a trail. Uh, I took this photo quite a few years ago. It's uh, I think it's up in New York State somewhere. I, I forget exactly where this is. Um, but there's a line that follows here. So, and this line kind of ends on the corner, so I'm going to take it from the corner 
and take this line and just kind of follow along here just like that and then same with this line just kind of follow that okay so this is more of the path and this is sort of going off the path this is where my trees are going to end up being so um let's see this first tree it's kind of about um let's see you can keep measuring i mean this you could do rough measuring all, all across uh, you know to get everything roughly correct so i mean you have a quarter of the page here so i mean this is half here's a quarter something like this and then drawing your image within uh, on the page it kind of helps with being able to do these measurements right on the page um so uh, this uh, tree is really going to be like way over here towards the edge and on the other side i didn't really draw this uh, rectangle exact to scale with what I have in the image, which can um, it, it can have adverse effect on, effects on what you're trying to do, but it's not like a huge deal breaker. So of course it would be easier if it was an exact scale replica, but uh, it just makes things a bit more challenging. So I mean I welcome the challenge. So and at the same time I'm not going to replicate this detail for detail. I'm, eventually going to add in some details that I want to see that is not exactly within this picture. So with this you have the basics of the tree and I'm just kind of hinting at the, the roots at the bottom of the tree here. Something like that. And then the second tree is going to start somewhere about here basing it on where it is in the reference image. And the roots kind of working the way around like this. And the trees about like this. Now I'm keeping the sketch very, very loose. Um, I'm also being a little bit stiff with it. I'm not really being as loose as I should be, but it's right. It's a rough sketch, and this is typically how a lot of my drawings start. Um, this is typically the way that they'll end up looking before I start adding a lot of de the detail work to them. And notice that these three trees um, uh, all end before the halfway mark on the reference image is, and that's what I'm trying to do on this sketch. All right, so you have these three basic trees right about here and there's a lot of foliage and stuff behind so I'm just gonna do some rough work just to kinda hint at that. I'm not gonna do a fully detailed image here. Uh, normally if I was attempting a composition like this it would probably take me anywhere from three to four hours uh, to complete uh, with the amount of detail that I usually like putting into these. So, um, it would take me quite a long time. Okay, so I'm going to start to uh, erase out this line. Yeah, start to. <laughs> Not fully, but start to. Um, I'm going to add in this rock. I actually really like this rock that's over here. And uh, just kind of hint at what it looks like. Alright, so when you have this um, sort of composition going on here, this tree needs to kind of go a bit more this way, but that's not a big deal. I just like the way that it looks in the reference image that's so kind of going the opposite way there. So I'm going to change that real quick. But like I was saying, uh, you can really edit stuff that you don't really like within the um, original image. You know, let's say, I'll grab my marker here. Let's say if you want like a like a large rock somewhere on this. So if you want if you want to see like this whole area here just be a large rock <laughs> you can do it uh, one of the main things I really like about drawing landscapes is that even though if you have a re reference image let's say if you you know I, I like this image but you know it doesn't have big rocks you know because I, I like to sometimes I have big rocks within my image um, you can add them you know if let's say if you want to see a big cloudy sky you know you don't have to have these trees here you can leave these trees out and just have a big open sky right here and be able to draw in some nice large clouds or um, if you don't like these trees you know some of these trees are pine trees and some of some uh, other types of trees I'm not too sure I can't think about the top of my head but you can add in different types of trees if you want you know some smaller trees or more decorative delicate looking trees you sure can do that so I mean use your artistic license to change and alter things uh, the way that you want to see them um, so I'm gonna start to add in 
some of these rocks over here and they're not gonna mm, but I definitely want to add in this larger rock and I'm not gonna draw exactly how I did it in the reference but it's alright so I'm just gonna kinda do it something like that and the reason why I always kinda draw out this sort of area to my rocks it just helps to add in like these different planes onto the rock um, because I usually do this just to tell myself okay this is a highlight same with this and down in here will all be dark shadows and this could be another highlight up on top of here like that it just helps to add in a bunch of um, angles onto the rock which help to make it look like it's much more dynamic than just a two-dimensional uh, drawing so something like that okay and then there's this tree which I really like but what I want to do is I'm gonna get where the tree is I'm gonna really I want to make this tree rather large I'm you know because I want this to be where the eye really comes in I'm gonna make the t stump of this tree really like gnarly looking so I'm not sure how well it'll translate but you know as soon as you start adding details to these things it really starts to come into place I'm gonna have this root come all the way down kinda angle that back up and something like this I wanna have this root just kind of come down and work its way across here something like that just something different you know something different than what the image has to offer and just sort of erase this out don't need this line within the tree something like that okay and I'll carry actually you know what you can do with that's really cool is that you can even you know not even have this be a full like tree you can have this be like a even like a dead tree you know kind of have it that it just kind of cracked over or something and just sort of have it like that so that that I think is for composition sake I think is much more interesting just to have a, a dead tree sort of just sitting there with these gnarly roots all over the place something like that all right, and then um, I can uh, add in a few more like planes of rocks or something or just uh, patches of grass you know something in here something like that and um, there's a group of trees here but I think that'll take away from what this is so what I'm gonna do is instead of having these uh, this group of trees where it is I'm gonna move them over here just to kind of separate things something like this so tree there and have one tree kind of coming up behind this one like that and then there's just a lot of other trees in the background over here I'm gonna have one tree or two or three I don't know <laughs> I'll figure that once I yeah uh... all right let's add in another one and I'll add in something like this because this is the woods after all so I mean there's gonna be a lot of trees regardless so something like that and there's a gap in here so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll still use this pencil I'm just gonna make some light trees in the background over here but what I'm gonna do with these trees that I have defined is I'm gonna darken them in just to kinda of bring them out something like that same with these I'm gonna add a couple tree branches just to hint at it as well All right, and then there's this tree too many pencils on my desk too much stuff. Alright. Then we got this one. And then this big hunk of a trigger over here. The face of this thing needs to be much more established than what I have. That's better. 
Alright, I'll shade this thing in a little bit. And I'm keeping myself conscious of where the light's coming from, so I mean, even on this stump, it's going to be heavily shaded over here. Something like that. This thing be pretty heavily shaded underneath the, the roots here, but I'm not going to shade too much. I don't want to add too much detail within this uh, composition. I want to keep it simple. Alright, so there's a lot of tree branches going along with this thing, so I'm just going to lightly... Let me zoom in for this so you can guys can really kind of see what I'm doing with these trees. Alright, so with these branches, I'm just really kind of just going all out. Same with over here. I'll do the same thing, yeah, over here, something. Just to add texture, really, into these areas. Um, just, just for the sake of the sketch, that way I can kind of keep an idea of what I wanted to do. these trees I'm gonna add a defining line to the one side of these trees something like that just that way I know all right I'm gonna leave it just about like that zoom back out went the right way this time cool okay so you can kind of get an idea of the reference image to the actual concept sketch I guess I would call it um, it's nowhere near a complete image but that wasn't my intent for this I just wanted to kind of give everyone an idea of how you take the idea of a reference image and just take that and incorporate it into something that you kind of make your own so with this you have the basic um, elements that you would need and then you can always go back into the ref uh, reference image and you know extract the details of the trees and you know the ground all the, the leaves and such but I mean you have a much better idea of how to attempt a piece once you have the basic elements within the drawing. Because I know sometimes just staring at a blank piece of paper can be so um, daunting. Just, you know, having that blank piece of paper and then looking at the reference and seeing all that detail. So, I mean, instead of just... Um, <laughs> just sweating and just being all nervous about how, how to attempt it, uh, simplify your... your um, reference image down just by making line work and just breaking down areas into key elements and then transferring what you have onto your sketch that way you have some base of where to actually start and then you'll be much more confident about actually going in and attempting the final piece so I hope that helped everyone and if it did please give me a thumbs up and uh, leave me a comment if you have questions or anything uh, please be sure to leave a comment and I'll be uh, also be sure to uh, respond to you but um, hopefully you enjoyed this one and I will see you all later Take care.